All right, my friends. Um, so this one was a little trickier. Um, well, we're going to talk about a couple different ways to go about it here. Um, one way would be to, um, since they started with a leading three terms, you could always like kind of build in the missing, the, the like second to last and third to last terms there. So you could always, you know, you know, kind of work backwards, right? So, da, 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 da. okay, so let's see, they keep adding five, right? So this thing is arithmetic and they just keep adding five. So right before 99 would have been... 94 and right before 94 would have been 89. Um, so you could kind of work backwards like that and then you could see if our trick would work. So four plus 99 is 93 and no, is 103. <laughs> and nine plus 94 is 103 and 14 plus 89, oh yeah, it's 103. Okay, but now it's a matter of figuring out, like, okay, how many 103s would we have? So to get there, first, uh, let's talk about figuring out how many terms we have. So um, if they just keep adding five to jump from one term to the next, then we kind of need to figure out, you know, how many times did they add five, you know? So let's see, from four to 99, that's an increase of 95, right? 95, yeah. And so that's how many fives? What's that? 17, I think. Okay, so they would have added 17 fives to the first term to get there. So how many terms are in this list? So I hope it makes sense. There would be 18 terms because they started at four and then they had to add five 17 times to get to the last term. So um, that's one way to figure out that that is the 18th term. Um, so if there are 18 terms in the list, um, then, uh, then how many 103s would we have? And so I hope it makes sense. We'd end up with half that many, right? So 18 terms, that means you'd have nine pairs that add up to 103. There we go. So what would that be? That'd be 900 plus 27, so 927. There you go, and if everything I just said made sense, then that's amazing. Um, so congratulations on uh, understanding what I'm trying to say. Um, a couple notes, if what I said there about adding five, you know, uh, 17 fives, therefore that's the 18th term, does not make sense, um, then just a note, another way to figure that out, um, which I don't prefer, but uh, usually, but sometimes it can come in handy, is where you do what we've done in the past, where you write a pattern for the nth term. So it'd be four plus n minus one fives, like we'd have earlier in the lesson. And then you replace a sub n with 99, because you're basically asking, what should n or the number of term be for me to be getting 99 out? And then you could subtract the four over, you'd get 95. And then you could divide by five, um, you'd get uh, one, 19. Wait, did I do math wrong over there? I did. So awesome. I totally did math wrong. Oh, man. Okay. Woo. Because 95 divided by five is 19. Shoot. Which means it would have been a 19 there. Sorry, everybody. Which means there's 20 terms which means if there's 20 terms, there would have been 10 pairs. And you wouldn't have gotten 927, you would have gotten 1,030. Okay, apologies for the mistake there. Anyway, um, and then you could have gotten that there were 20 terms just by adding one to both sides. So apparently I should fall back on this method that I don't like as much. <laughs> okay, um, now let's talk about how to do this in a formulaic sense, okay? Um, so let's talk about, um, you know, what if you want a formula for how to do this? You know, what's the trick? So how did we get, you know, how did we get 50 over here in part A? Well, that was the number of terms, which I'm just call N for number of terms, divided by two, right? Because you had 100 terms and you, we decided to divide it by two. And then how did we get the 101? Um, well, that was simply the first term plus the nth term. 
So first term plus your nth term. Here we go. And then um, this would be a formula for what's called your nth partial sum. So if you see an uppercase S with a subscript N, that means your nth partial sum. So in this case, it was a 100th partial sum of this, of this arithmetic series. Now let's see for this one, would that have worked, right? How did we get the 10? Oops, oh, scribbles, sorry. Boop. Okay, how did we get, when we did 10 times 103, how did we get the 10? Well, the 10 was from the number of terms, which I eventually found out was 20, uh, divided by two. And how did we get the 103? Well, that was just your first term plus your nth term. So that would be your first term plus your nth term. In this case, it was the 20th term. Um, and then that, again, is the formula for the nth partial sum of has to be an arithmetic sequence for that to make sense. So anyway, hopefully that makes sense um, because you're going to need to have it memorized. So the formula for the nth partial sum of an arithmetic Let's see, I guess I could say sequence here. Okay, so um, notation for nth partial sum is S sub n, and then you take the number of terms and divide it by two, and then you multiply it by A sub one plus A sub n. Okay, now um, before we do our very last trick, um, let's, um, let's go back and make sure you're okay with the notation that I'm using here. Um, so I'm going to go back to part A, and I wrote this in formula in kind of a formulaic sense, but I'm going to take this away, and then I want to make sure you're okay with like the notation I'm using. So um, for this particular problem, we were adding up 100 terms, so that would be called a 100th partial sum. So the n value is 100, and we got this 50 right here by taking n, the number of terms, which is 100, and dividing it by 2. And then we got this 101 by taking a sub 1, or your first term, which was 1, and adding your a sub 100, which is your one, which is 100 in this case. So your 100th first term, 100th term, and then 100 over 2 is your n minus 2. And so that would explain this and this. Um, for part B, for part B, we were doing some things here and I do hope that this formula is really just saying something that you already knew um, it's not magic um, so for for part B we were finding the sum of the first 20 terms and so we basically knew we had 20 numbers but we divided them by two um, and then uh, that would that would be how many you know of your first term plus and 99 was your 20th term. Um, so this is this is kind of what it looks like when you're executing this in its formulaic sense. And then from there, you'd have 20 over two, which is 10. Your first term was four and your 20th term was 99. And then it would, you would give you this stuff. There you go. Do I think you're better off with the formula? Not really. Um, if you could do this um, without the formula, then you're doing amazing. Okay. It's probably also good to memorize it, though. All right, example th three. Find the first five terms of the implicitly defined sequence. A sub 1 equals negative 5, and A sub k plus 1 equals A sub k plus 3. For part B, I want you to write an explicit formula for the nth term of the sequence. So that's where you figure out what A sub n is. Um, and then for part C, I'd like for you to evaluate the sum as I goes from 3 to 10 of A sub I. See how it goes. Check in with me in the next and last video for this section.